I challenge you to a game. And if I win, then Joey is no longer your slave. Fine by me. But if you lose, then you must swear on the life of your grandfather that you'll never play card games ever again. Big deal. He'll be dead by the end of the month. And you're going to see why. So this incorporates a little bit of everything in here. We have some stuff that uh, references kind of Yu-Gi-Oh! And, and the way it played, which I found really fun and enjoyable when I was younger. It's very inexpensive. And it actually gets to play like genuinely funny cards with running a funny strategy. Because I feel like Battle for Baldur's Gate and to a lesser extent Adventures in the Forgotten Realms were kind of kicked around on release. So we made this deck to kind of showcase the best of out of those two sets. And they're really also the only sets that use these mechanics. So with all that being said, our commander today will be Will. Blade of Frontiers. So from one into red, you get a legendary creature here with whenever you would roll one or more dice, roll an additional dice and ignore the lowest roll. So granting you an advantage from D&D, &D, right? And whenever you roll one or more dice, put a 1-1 counter on Will. Use the background. So for this half of the deck, we want to roll a bunch of dice, get Will to be a really big commander and swing in with a Voltron, pseudo Voltron kind of style. And for the background enchantment, we have Dungeon Delver, which gives our commander Will that if you would trigger a room ability in a dungeon, trigger it twice instead. So now you see the premise. We're going to roll some dice. We're going to deal with some dungeons, and we have a bunch of creatures, a.k.a. monsters. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start rolling off with some dice synergies for the first half of this video, or the first video of the two. I'm going to pick Brazen Dwarf. He pings your opponents whenever you roll a dice. Very nice. Feywild Trickster creates a 1-1 fairy with flying every time you roll a dice, which is awesome. Uh, one of my next favorite cards is Bamboozling Beeble, which is an affinity card. This is legal in this set and allows you to one and a tap to grant you an advantage on a roll. It also has protection from robots, which comes in handy when your opponent inevitably plays Orbar. Barbarian class is a very good one drop in this deck. It has three levels to its ability, but we really just want the first one to give ourselves an extra advantage and maximize the chance of rolling better dice. Pixie Guide is just a standard creature that will actually grant you an advantage on all your rolls, giving us better odds to roll better stuff. We also have what is arguably the best card in the deck, Delina Wild Mage, which has the ability whenever Delina Wild Mage attacks, choose a target creature you control, then roll a d20. 1 through 14 rolls will get you create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of that creature, except it's not legendary and has exile this creature at the end of combat. If you roll a 15 through 20, create one of those tokens, roll again. So if you use Delina Wild Mage with a card like Will, your commander, which grants you an advantage, or Pixie Guide, which grants you an advantage, if you roll a 15 or above and get to roll again, you'll actually give yourself an extra advantage. So you could end up rolling so many dice that it becomes impossible for you to roll below a 15. And you could end up killing all your opponents right there on the spot by creating 100,000 tokens. But now that we have some of our dice synergies, let's go over some of the stuff that you actually want to roll dice with. And stuff that will actually let you roll dice. Uh, Wand of Wonders will let you play cards from your opponent's deck. Will's Reversal is very on flavor and redirects effects. Vexing Puzzle Box is a 3 mana rock that rolls a bunch of dice and could end up being an artifact tutor pretty quickly in this deck. Uh, Component Pouch is also a solid mana rock that adds 2 colored mana. Chaos Channeler lets you impulse draw on an attack trigger. And Earth Cult Elemental is just walking removal. Now at this point in the program, I'd like to take a break and talk about 2 cards that will roll dice. That I kind of recommend. I don't recommend you buy them though. You have Ancient Copper Dragon and Ancient Silver Dragon. Now both of these are two of the most highly regarded cards from Battle for Baldur's Gate. And they both have on combat damage triggers to roll dice. Ancient Copper Dragon lets you create that many treasure tokens equal to your roll on the dice. Which in this deck could be 20 fairly quickly. And Ancient Silver Dragon lets you draw cards equal to the roll of the dice. Both these cards are super sweet. That being said, Ancient Copper Dragon is $50 and Ancient Silver Dragon is $20. So I don't necessarily recommend you buy them if you're on a budget. If you want to, you can. You can always proxy them, but they are super sweet cards. Anyway, 
back to the opponent. We also have cards like Iron Mastiff, which is most likely to deal damage to other players. Could deal damage to you, but most likely to other players. Hoarding Ogre ramps you with treasure tokens, one of the best kinds of ramps in my opinion. Aberrant Mind Sorcerer gets an instant or sorcery back from the graveyard. Scion of Styga taps a creature on ETB. It also comes in with Flash, so you can throw it in at your opponent's end step. D digit, 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 d this genie. Twin Seer is a big scryer. Sword of Hours is pretty sweet in this deck as well as it can give Will 1-1 one, one counters as well as rolling a dice, which will also give him 1-1 one, one counters. And we haven't even gotten to the best part is we can actually play with Unfinity cards to make him better. Cards like Vidalcan Squirrel Whacker lets you roll two dice on an ETB. He could swap out his power and toughness with one of the dice rolls. Strength Testing Hammer rolls a dice could let you draw a card, kind of depends on luck. Priority Boarding turns into pretty decent impulse draw while you're rolling dice. Boing bounces a creature and lets you roll a dice. You actually want to roll a lower roll, but uh, at the very end it'll bounce something and let you put a 1-1 one -one counter down. Exchange of Words doesn't really combo super well in this deck, but I find it to be pretty funny and you can mess with your opponents. Monitor Monitor lets you reroll one dice roll. Does have the downside of it opens an attraction on ETB, so you actually should put some attractions with your deck. I don't like them, but to each their own. Circuits Act will let you roll three dice, putting three 1 1 counters down. It also lets you put down three tokens. Electrocute is a worse shock, which is actually a worse play with fire at this point, but you can play it from your graveyard if you specifically roll a six during the turn. So, it's not great. So we've gone over a bunch of the rolling dice section. Now I kind of want to jump into the dungeon section of the deck. Really complete the whole dungeon dice monsters thing. So with the background, Dungeon Delver. Our commander will has the ability to trigger dungeon rooms an additional time. For starters, I think the initiative and Undercity are better mechanics than Forgotten Realms. So I'm mainly going to focus on those. You could do some of the other dungeons from Forgotten Realms, and they're totally fine, and if they suit your style, go for it. I think the initiative is a little more consistent with what it brings to the table. It gives you a little bit better value. So we're going to need to take the initiative. So we're going to use cards like Stirring Bard, who takes it on ETB. He can give a creature like your giant commander menace till the end of turn. Blood Boil Sorcerer also takes it on ETB along with Ara. I, I don't even. The, the card band in Popper. Baywild Caretaker takes the initiative, gives you a 1 1 flyer at the end of turn. Tomb of Horrors Adventure takes the initiative, lets you copy the second spell you cast each turn. Copy it twice if you completed a dungeon. Once you have the initiative and start moving through the Undercity, cards with stuff like Venture the Dungeon on it will actually help you move through that dungeon instead of one of the original three. So we'll play cards like Shortcut Seeker, who ventures in on combat damage. Zalto, the Fire Giant Duke, lets you do it when he's dealt damage. Secret Door can do it for four and a blue. Yuntai Malison does it on combat damage. It can't be blocked if attacking alone, so if you really want to get in, you can. Eccentric Apprentice does it on ETBs, makes you create a 1-1 one, one if you've completed a dungeon. Displacer Beast also does it on ETBs. For 3 and a blue, you can return back to your hand. Cast them again. Avoid removal. Bar the Gate is a counter spell that lets you venture. And we have this super sweet card, Phantom Steed, which can create token copies of all these ETB venture into the dungeon cards. And last but not least, we have the enchantment Fly, which gives a creature like Will again, flying, and whenever he deals combat damage, venture into the dungeon. So all this will add up to a ton of value. Hopefully you'll get to play a bunch of free spells off the top of your deck and, you know, create treasure tokens, use some removal, drain some life, all that kind of stuff. We can also run a few other cards to help us venture. 50 feet of rope will let you do it for four every turn. Dungeon map does it for three, a little bit of a discount. The land dungeon descent will do it for four, but you have to tap an untapped legendary creature you control, as well as it only works as a sorcery, so it's honestly just not great. 
I do get the feeling that they thought venturing into the dungeon would be super busted. Um, maybe they were planning for other formats because I know it's done a lot of stuff in like Legacy and Popper, mainly with the initiative side of things because a lot of these cards come in and they cost a ton to let you venture and they have such restrictions like Dungeon Descent comes in tapped for tap it, tap an untap legendary creature you control to venture into the dungeon. But whatever, it's commander, you got a pretty decent chance. To fill all these very expensive needs, I'm going to recommend you run cards like Rituals. Rituals will help save your butt, give you tons of mana. Obviously you'll run like your Arcane Signets, your Soul Ring, stuff like that. Along with cards like Big Score and Improvised Weaponry, stuff that will create treasure tokens. You're playing in red, so that's a, not too hard of a thing to do. All in all, I think this is actually a pretty fun deck, and when I played it, it put smiles on everyone's faces at the table. They all had a good time. It wasn't crazy overpowered, but it didn't fall behind. Um, but uh, yeah, I think we're going to close down there. So I'm putting the full deck list in the description now. You can go check it out. It's on MTG Goldfish. Let me know what you think of the deck, what tweaks you would make, some things here and there. All the mana base is going to be in there as well. Plenty of is it Islands. Spoiler alert, they're not super friendly for your budget, but they get the job done. There's also a couple other cards like card draw spells, a couple more counter spells. Stuff you would just normally kind of run in a red-blue deck. But uh, yeah, I think that's it. I hope you all have a great day. Uh, bye.